Hi there, I'm Lee, welcome to iMind Blocks. In this video, I'll be sharing with you a review and comparison of the three most popular hardware wallets. So we'll be comparing the Trezor, the Ledger Nano S, and the Keep Key. So I was fortunate enough to get my hands on one of each of the most popular hardware wallets. So we have the Trezor, we have the Ledger Nano S, and we also have the Keep Key uh, by Keep Key. So I was provided each one of these hardware wallets uh, by the manufacturers actually, and I picked these up between sort of six months to almost a year ago now. And I've had lots of experience with each one of the hardware wallets. And recently, because of the crypto prices that have been increasing, I've been using each one of the wallets more and more uh, frequently. So what I want to show you in this video is a comparative review of each of the wallets and help you to decide which one is gonna be the most suitable, the best purchase for yourself. So it's not about what is best for me, it's about what is best for you guys. So I'm gonna be breaking down each one of the hardware wallets, what I like and dislike, uh, the functionality, the design, screen, software. I'll be breaking all of that down and kind of sharing you uh, on a comparative basis so you can make an informed decision about which is gonna be the best one to suit your needs. So let's take a look at the design aspects of each one of the hardware wallets. Let's take a look at the design for the Trezor hardware wallet. So you can see this is the black plastic version. It comes in a few other colors. You can also get it in white and gray plastic. I've seen it. In some pictures, I've seen it with a all metal uh, casing, but I've never seen that available for sale. So I don't know whether that one was just a limited special edition version. On the front, you've got a screen. It's kind of almost a square to a point. Slightly rectangular, but quite squared off compared to the other hardware wallets. On the front, you've got two buttons, one on the left and one on the right. At the bottom, there is a micro USB connector. That's the same for all of the hardware wallets. So if you have a Samsung phone, it'll be the same uh, connector also as many tablets. So that can be quite a good thing uh, for you guys to use. Very simple on the back, nothing um, of note, just more plastic. In the top corner, we have a little loop back so you can connect it to a keyring. Trezor logo on the top. And that's it for the design of this one. Pretty simple, plain and functional. Next up, we have the Ledger Nano S. So this design is a bit more like a regular USB thumb drive. So it has a metal casing around the outside edge and then the main device is integrated within it. So you can kind of almost use this as like a protective cover, which is, I think, quite a cool feature, keeps it hidden away. On the top of the device, we've got two buttons, one on the left and one on the right, and they're quite good to use together. So, for example, when you first um, use the device or every time you sort of access it afterwards, you can use these to scroll through a menu and access uh, and set your pin. Um, so that's quite a cool feature. I do like that two button interface, same as the uh, Trezor, it helps you to kind of confirm transactions, but also cancel them. The screen is quite a bit smaller. It's not a very big screen at all, but it's probably just about big enough to see uh, the basics of a transaction. So um, compared to all the other screens, uh, the Ledger does have the smallest screen overall, but like I say, it is functional and it um, gets the job done. Just on the end there, you can see it's the same micro USB connector. On the back, you've got some uh, logos and information, but not, not an awful lot on there. On the other side, and just pop that back in. Obviously you could use a uh, key ring or loop to keep that on your keys. And now onto the Keep Key uh, by Keep Key. So this is the biggest of the hardware wallets. It's significantly bigger than the other wallets, although it has the same uh, basic features. So it's a all plastic case. Although it's kind of two different plastics, you've got the more this solid body on the reverse, the Keep Key logo. And then on the front, it's almost semi-transparent. I don't think you can quite see it on the camera, but at certain angles, just through the plastic, you can very faintly see the screen underneath. Obviously, when it's illuminated, it comes right through with no problems at all. The Keep Key also has a slightly different design to the others. 
because this one only has a single button for confirmations. So the way it works is a, you can either press it uh, quickly or you can press it more of a longer press and it shows you with the on-screen software um, what you need to do to kind of confirm a transaction. In most cases, you hold it just for a second to confirm the transaction going through. On the bottom, you also have a micro USB connection. Once again, same as with the other hardware wallets. Uh, the only thing I would say on, on this is I would like to have had it at a, a 90 degree angle to the button because what you find is I would kind of like to have it in this orientation and obviously when the cable is plugged in um, you can't do that you have to have it basically always laying on its back there um, it would have been nice to have that connect on the side there maybe they can do that in a future revision I think that would work slightly better um, but it's a very nice design. You can see the difference in this one if you compare it to the other wallets. This one has a more, um, almost like a more professional corporate type feel. Um, not so much with the ledger, but compared against the treasure, uh, sorry, the treasure, this one has a much um, better feel, a little bit more professional to it. Whereas the treasure can sometimes, if you, I will just show you uh, back in comparison, it's got almost like a I don't want to say unprofessional, but the finish is just not not quite up to the same standard. Um, and again, with the ledger, you can see the ledger is also a very good, very good finish. I think with the Trezor, it's just the plastic that they've used. It makes it look a little bit cheaper than the other uh, devices. Okay, so now focusing on the screens of each one of the devices, starting with the Trezor. First comes up with a little padlock, and then you can also, as I said before, you can customize it to include your own logo. And when you first start up the device, um, after it's been initialized, you'll be asked to enter your PIN. So the way it works is, you will see in my initial setup video, it shows you a PIN arrangement on the screen. And then what you have to do is enter your PIN uh, according to that arrangement on the device. So for example, if our first digit was number one, we need to enter on the screen at the bottom right hand corner and select that as one. Okay, so here you can see that we are just about to send our Bitcoin transaction. So I just wanted to briefly share with you and show you exactly what the software interface looks like. I've covered this in a lot more detail in my initial setup video. So if you're interested in seeing more with the software, uh, please go and check out those videos. But just very briefly, this is the interface that you use to send your transactions. In this instance, it's for sending Bitcoin. So you just open up your uh, Chrome web browser and it works with a, uh, a web interface. Here you can enter your Bitcoin address that you're sending to the amounts and you can also change the Bitcoin fees. And then from this point, you just need to hit the green button, which is to send the transaction. And at that point, uh, you need to confirm it on the hardware wallet. Okay, so from the screen capture, you would have seen I've just kind of demonstrated a transaction. And this is how it looks on the device. So you can see it confirms the send, although it's quite small, but you can see it to the eyes, it's okay. So it confirms the amount at the very top and also to the address, which is the Bitcoin tips address, by the way. And then you've got two options. We can either cancel the transaction or we can confirm the transaction using the device. So in this instance, I'm just going to cancel the transaction. It's really just to demonstrate what that process looks like. Um, otherwise, uh, if you confirm it, you'll just see a transaction confirmation. Next up is the Ledger Nano S. So if you plug in the cable, you can see there's a little tiny Ledger logo. One of the cool things that I do like about the Ledger is that we can enter our pin using the buttons um, on the top of the device, so we can go down and we can go up to select a number and to select the first digit in this case if we say the first digit is a number one we press them both together to confirm that is the our entry and that's how you enter the pin on the so you enter it on the device rather than kind of looking at the device and then entering it on screen so I do like that feature once you have entered your pin you are presented with a display menu so you can see here you can choose a different types of wallets Depending on what firmware you have on the device, it will give you um, more or less wallets and you can select through a range of them. So for example, if we just start off using our Bitcoin wallet, I press them. So if we go right to select through or we go left and then to confirm we press them both together. And we can just leave it on that screen there now and now we can enter or access it on the computer screen. 
So here you can see the software that's used to interact with the Ledger Nano S. Uh, we've opened up our Bitcoin wallet and you can see that we have our balance. You can also see transaction history and we have the option to send and receive transactions. So I'll show you now what a demonstration transaction looks like. Here you can see our demonstration transactions. So at the top we have the Bitcoin amount, which is 1000 for Bitcoin. The address that we're sending it to. We've also got our total balance. The transaction fees we can set within the, the uh, wallet. And we've also got the total confirmation amounts at the bottom there. Uh, from this point, we would just click on the send button. And from that point onwards, we would then confirm it on the, the hardware wallet. Okay, I've used the computer software to set up a dummy transaction. So pretty much the same as before, uh, except this time you can see the transaction is broken down into separate details. So we've got a X or cancellation of the transaction or we can press the button to confirm the transaction. And like I said, because the screen is a little bit smaller than with the other screens, it kind of breaks it into separate pieces. So you can see the amount, 1,000th of a Bitcoin. You can see the start and end of the address. And also you've got the Bitcoin confirmation fees there as well. So that's how it looks when you want to send a transaction out. And again, I'm just going to press the X and cancel this transaction. And now for the keep key, just plug it in. So you can see there is part of the display there. It actually comes from kind of this point all the way across to this point. You'll see that in a second when I show you a transaction. So as with the Trezor wallet, you can see it shows you a pin matrix and what we need to do is uh, use that matrix and then enter the pin uh, via the computer. Here we have the Bitcoin wallet for the Keep Key. It is a very simple wallet and interface to use. You can see that we have the option to update the firmware on the Keep Key. We can send a Bitcoin, receive Bitcoins and also we've got some transaction history. Also further down to the bottom you can see that we can also interact with the Bitcoin Cash uh, fork. And just showing you what the demonstration transaction looks like. You can see again a very simple interface. So we've got the address to send the transaction to and the amount. And also we've got this fee at the bottom which is set by default. I'm not sure if a update to the firmware or an update to the software would it allow us to change the fee but at the moment within this uh, current settings um, there's no option to adjust the Bitcoin fee. So now let's take a look at the hardware wallet itself and see uh, what the transaction looks like on the device. So again with the keep key we have to enter the pin first and now we can see the transaction information. Hopefully you can see that in the light you can see the full length of the screen and the display. So again, it confirms the transaction amount at the top and also the full line of the Bitcoin address. So you can see that very clearly. Yeah, so it's really good for um, anyone that has not so good eyesight. You can see it much clearer. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if the camera picks it up quite as well as you can see it to the eye. And to confirm the transaction, in this case, we would just hold this button um, just for a second, if I tap it, it won't work. You kind of have to press and hold it until you get like a little, almost a little timer comes up. And that was how you uh, confirm the transaction on this device. Let's take a look at the pricing for each one of the hardware wallets. First up, we have the Trezor, which comes in at $109. With DHL shipping to the UK, it was an extra $21. So that brings up to exactly $130. The Ledger represented the best value for money overall. It came in at $116 with free shipping. The Keep Key was the most expensive, mostly for the hardware, which is at $129, plus an additional $46 for shipping to the UK. Uh, I think the shipping um, was excessive, to be honest, with the Keep Key. I was a little bit disappointed with that. Um, not only is it the most expensive wallet itself, uh, the shipping is um, incredibly expensive considering it's such a small and lightweight device. So that was a little bit disappointing. Clearly the Ledger represents the best value for money uh, compared to each one of the other devices when you also consider the shipping. 
But what I will say is please double check the shipping prices because your local rates may be significantly cheaper than what I'm getting to receive the items here in the UK. So if you're in the US, for example, you might find that the shipping is significantly cheaper for you. So it's always best to check. Uh, one other point just before we move off the pricing page is please always order from an official reseller. So either directly from the official sites themselves or authorized and approved resellers. Okay, so we're coming to the end of this video. So let's just have a few final closing thoughts of uh, each one of the hardware wallets. So again, starting off with the Trezor. I would recommend this device to anyone that wants a greater level of um, options and capabilities. This Trezor device, it might not necessarily be the best looking, but it's very functional and very capable. So if you want something where you can do um, a wide range of different activities, uh, multiple uh, different types of coins stored in this device, and also other various levels of two-factor authentication, I would say go for the Trezor. It's gonna give you the most um, options and capabilities. The Ledger Nano S is one of my favorites, if not the favorite of the hardware wallets for me personally. It's a really good all-rounder. I really like the design from a functional point of view. It works just like a USB pen drive almost. Um, really good for function and form factor. I like the, the dual buttons. The only sort of downside with the Ledger is the small screen. Um, if you've got not such good eyesight, then the small screen is probably the only part that really lets this um, device down. You don't need it for an awful lot of information, but some people might prefer that slightly bigger screen. But other than that, it's a really good all-rounder, supports lots of coins. Um, I really like the Ledger. And finally, we have the Keep Key uh, by Keep Key. So this device is really good. Um, I think a lot of um, corporate or business users will be um, really interested in using a device like this. For I mean, mostly it looks great. I mean, it's a really sleek looking piece of kit. It looks very um, professional. Um, probably also the color schemes. The button operation, it's one simple button operation, works very well. Um, the big advantage to this device over the others is the screen size. So if you've got um, maybe sort of fat fingers or your eyes are not quite as good as they used to be, um, then the bigger screen is definitely gonna be a huge advantage for you. Like I say, it's slightly bigger than the other ones, but if you want uh, a crystal clear, um, bright display that's really easy to read and easy to understand and interpret, the Keep Key is the one that you're gonna go for. It supports um, a wide range of uh, currencies uh, and coins, just like the others, um, but this one, just it just makes it easier to use um, with that big display. So that's the, the option for that one there. Okay, so wrapping up here, I have certainly hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I've tried to kind of uh, show you the various aspects of each one of the uh, hardware wallets, uh, give you a basic overview of each one of them, and also the basic operations um, of each one of the devices, and to give you guys a, a feel of how each one works and what one was gonna be suitable for you. My personal favorite is uh, the Ledger. Um, I really like this device for many reasons, but mostly it's because it's a really good all-rounder. It kind of does everything you need, and um, it's really simple, easy to use. Dual buttons, um, really nice form factor. Yeah, I really like the Ledger. It works really well. I've had no problems with it um, at all. Okay, so finishing up here, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave those in the comments area down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Um, hopefully I've covered everything, but if there's anything I've missed out and you guys want to ask me, um, be sure to do that. Till next time guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.